Hey, it's Michelle Visage, and you're watching Jamar 84's YouTube channel. You better work. Yes. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Jamar Four here once again, and we are here to discuss episode eight, I believe this is, of RuPaul's Drag Race. Everybody, or season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race, it is starting to get to the end. <laughs> I'm sad because I've enjoyed this season so much, so much better than last season, by miles, leaps, and bounds. <laughs> so, last week, if you recall, Thorgy Thor was eliminated, which threw a lot of people off because a lot of people uh, predict, blah, 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 predicted Thorgy was going to be in the top three, myself included. My top three initial prediction at the beginning of the season, if I haven't reneged, was Bob, Thorgy, and Kim possibly substituting for Acid Betty. Then once Acid Betty got eliminated, that's when I replaced it with Kim. So, and however, there's been a discussion that I thought would be very interesting. I watched it on um, After Buzz and I listened to it on the Drag Race Recap Podcast that it would be interesting if Rue set it up to where the top three for the first time were three African-Americans, Bob, Naomi, and Chi-Chi. That would be interesting. I would be here for that. <laughs> I would be here for that. But um, we can go ahead and talk about the episode. So they go back into the workroom and they see Thorgy's lipstick message, right? And so it says something about, you know, everybody's great, but... Take down Bob and, you know, <laughs> the top three should be Bob, Derek, and Naomi. And Kim Chi and Chi Chi are looking like, bitch, <laughs> you tried it. So, <laughs> which we all know that his prediction isn't true based off the end of this episode. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are happy that this episode finally came, including myself. <laughs> In all honesty. So... Everybody just starts reading Derek, basically, because Derek just... <sighs> Last week was Derek's only time winning a challenge, right? And we can't help but feel like the only reason that Derek won that challenge was because he was connected to Bob. Okay, if it was rated individually, Bob would have won on his own. And even Derek's campaign from the Shady Politics... What he said and was doing wasn't even the part of the campaign that was interesting. It was, well, it was what was Bob was doing that people were watching and what made it good. So it wasn't even you. Bob was fine on his own. I mean, he just used you as like a little prop, okay? He was fine by himself. You were so lenient on Bob to be funny. So it's almost like, did you really win? You know, so <laughs> you just have to be in the right place at the right time to me. But uh, they kept saying that he should have been in the bottom. We even saying Derek should have been in the bottom many times. Derek should have been in the bottom like episode three. Okay. Who was uh, who was in the, uh, the bottom that week? That was when they did. It was uh, uh, Robbie and Cynthia. It should have been uh, Cynthia and Derek. Even though probably the outcome still would have been the same. She still should have been in the bottom a long time ago. Because <laughs> remember, she had the afro and she was trying to say, it's okay to be gay. And then the Empire thing, it was it was a mess. For those that were uh, unfamiliar with Empire watching that, they're probably like, I'm not going to watch that show. <laughs> it was not. Mm -mm, they tried that. But anyways, basically Derek has been kind of coasting by and just been keeping... Uh, uh, you know what? There's like a... a I don't know what is it a conspiracy but people feel like certain people who are famous prior to drag race have like a contract that they're supposed to be on the show for a specified amount of time like they can't be eliminated until episode seven eight nine later in the game to where they've been on the show long enough to create somewhat of an impact <laughs> and so they want to keep uh like miss fame and 
Derek Barry, who are famous before Drag Race, they want to keep them on the show as long as possible so that their fans of them will tune into the show and hopefully become fans of the show and thus boost their ratings. It would make sense because Derek Barry should have been... At least Miss Fame was giving you looks. <laughs> Derek is not giving you anything. Even that last time when she tried to give you a look with a tearaway, it still was giving me nightgown. But... <laughs> it just is what it is so they have to do the mini challenge which is the puppet challenge and uh, if I can remember who got who Bob had kimchi Naomi had Derek Derek had Naomi kimchi had Chi Chi and Chi Chi had Bob now these were actually probably like the funniest mini, mini challenge that they've had I thought the reading the library's open one was going to be the funniest one but that flopped so, but the funniest one was obviously Chi Chi when she was playing Bob <laughs> and she was talking about how he was really loud and how he actually had a mini purse first. That's because that's what she calls the purse that she made in the first episode. Walk to the room purse first. Ow. She actually made a little mini one and <laughs> had Bob use that. It was really, really funny. But all the while, you know, Naomi and Derek had been sort of making this, this tension I'm not even sure where it came from, honestly. It just kind of came out of nowhere. But uh, Derek was making fun of uh, uh, Naomi's wigs. Naomi was making fun of how he wraps fabric around himself and how he doesn't glue down his eyebrows. And there was just this whole big debate. Now, Derek was trying to make a point to say that, well, what I do isn't drag, I'm an impersonator. And Naomi's like, and Naomi kept saying, well, along the lines of what I was thinking and what I believe a lot of other people were thinking. This is RuPaul's drag. Say it again. RuPaul's drag race. Okay, this is not RuPaul's impersonation race. This is not America's Got Talent. Or so you think you can dance. Okay, whatever the show that Derek Barrett was on. You are supposed to give drag. Okay? It's amazing how Courtney Act made it as far as she did, but you know what? Courtney gave like looks. I can't even I can't even knock Courtney. But Courtney gave some damn good looks, but she relied on pretty. Like she was giving fish, you know, fishy makeup, real woman. And you're supposed to kind of be more drag, you know, more extreme, more, you know, dynamic, things like that. And she, even RuPaul said it like, you know, you don't really paint an illusion of a woman. You just really paint what's there already and just throw some, they call it Sharpie eyeliner on, <laughs> you know, call it a day. And she was trying to say, you know, like, oh, it's not the same and blah, blah, blah. And Derek was trying to make a, make fun of, you know, how Naomi talks and I guess because Naomi does kind of have like that monotone voice, but when she was trying to impersonate her, she sounded like a door. If y'all play it back and listen to it, it sounded like uh, Derek Barry was making it a door impersonation more than she was trying to make a uh, Naomi impersonation. And Naomi was like, "Well, you know what? That was actually pretty good." You know, he's like, "Oh, so you're you're accepting the read?" He was like, "Yeah, I have tough skin," and he was like, "He looks like it." I was like, "Ooh, all right." <laughs> all right and then Naomi was like and Derek looked like he has thin hair and everybody was like "Ooh," I'm like eh wasn't as strong and Derek was like you know it's funny how she has to sit and be quiet and wait for an hour to come back with a read I was like now look see it was cute little banter at first but now I feel like in that work room you almost be wanna you almost feel like you're ready to fight because they was going at it in ways like, look, you tried it <laughs> and we about to be ready to go down for our tens <laughs> with this one, cause they was getting a little offensive. I was getting mad for Naomi. I'm like, this little <laughs> Britney Spears wanna be trying to talk about me and my skin and my drag when she can't even glue down her brows. I don't think so. I don't think so. So of course, they talk about, you know, they have to have the emotional moments or the, the mirror moments like uh, Jay on After Buzz trying to talk about it. Uh, Bob talked about his mom and how she's sick and how he she inspired him to be, you know, the man that he is. And 
as open as he is and this, that, and the fourth. And uh, we revisit Kim's mom issue, how he doesn't know that his that her, his mom doesn't know that he does drag. He thinks she's, she's, or she thinks that he's just a makeup artist somewhere. And, you know, even Bob said, it's kind of sad that, you know, I know more about Kim Chi than her, his own mom does. And, you know, that's not really fair. And that makes it raise a good point because when you can't be who you are 100% to somebody, whether it be a parent, family member, or a friend, or whatnot, they really never get a chance to really know you because you're hiding a big part of who you are and what makes you happy. So, but at the same time, Kim was raised in North Korea, and drag is not, it's it's such a far left liberal, liberal concept that, that part of the world is not the biggest fan of so I get it I really do get it and he feels like he she would be disappointed and honestly I can't say that I can't say that I was about to say honestly you know if she can't appreciate how amazing kimchi is like kimchi is a amazing at what she does okay with construction makeup and just the overall just everything Flawless and amazing. And if she just can't see the beauty in that, then it's really just her loss. Because, damn. <laughs> okay? But, we get to the main challenge. And this is the, the one episode of each season where they have to come up with three different looks. And usually each uh, season is different with what they have to come up with. This week, they had to come up with baby, a baby look or baby realness, whatever they wanted to call it. And then they had to come up with a look inspired by who their mothers were. And lastly, they had to construct a glamazon, eleganza, extravaganza, whatever, all them gonzas, <laughs> um, outfit made out of books. Okay. Now, after they've been working on it and they've been, you know, doing what they have to do, <laughs> they also says, oh, by the way, you have to do an opening act to some character from some movie who I wasn't familiar with and neither was Naomi. But I guess she was kind of like a little frumpy, older woman. Really, that part was just kind of weird. <laughs> uh, since Chi Chi won the main challenge, she was able to choreograph it. And Kim, and of course, when, they, when the word choreography comes up, Kim Chi's whole heart stops. And she's just like, oh my God, I'm screwed. <laughs> So they're practicing and she's messing up and I'm just like, oh Lord, could this be when Kim Chi goes home? No, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but when they uh, when they get to the runway, or actually no, before they get to the runway, because th this is a heavy workroom episode. Lots of footage came from the workroom this episode. They asked each other, well, you know, do you feel like you should win? And of course, Naomi was like, you know, yeah, I feel like, you know, my drag aesthetic is this, that, and the fourth, and blah, blah, blah. And Derek was to try to make a point of how uh, he just feel like everybody should feel like they deserve to win. And even with Bob, even though like no other queen that has won, what? How did she word this? She was basically calling Bob ugly, <laughs> in a way that no Bob doesn't possess the same type of beauty that the past winners have had. She said something along those lines, and I'm just like, well, wait. Wait a minute. If that's the case, you shouldn't even, you know you damn well you shouldn't win. Because at least Bianca, BB, Tyra, Raja, Sharon, and Jinx, and Violet can construct clothes. This that you walked out on and the stuff that you have walked out with thus far up until this point, not winning material. Okay? So I would highly suggest you shut the fuck up, but. Because I'm not, it's it's not happening. It's You have no room to talk about somebody and past winner's traditions because we could look at you and say the same thing, baby, the same thing. But there's been a lot of discussion about how, and I'm, mainly this is on the Drag Race Recap Show. If you guys haven't subscribed to that on iTunes, make sure you go check that out. They received uh, questions about do they feel like Derek Barry is bullied on the show. Does Bob the Drag Queen bully Derek Barry? And 
from this episode, I and I've kind of always felt like, no, Derek Barry is not being bullied. If everybody is coming at Derek Barry, it's because Derek likes to say sly shit under his breath and talk about people and then when, tries to hide his hand when people try to throw it back at him. And that's pretty much how I see it. I see a, I see a person who can dish it but not take it. Okay? He's not being bullied. He just doesn't have <laughs> the room to talk about most people. He likes to throw jabs and stuff, but he uh, he can't really take it thus far. Otherwise, he gets all personal and all defensive and whatnot. Like, last week in Untuck, the whole him thing. It's just like, okay. All right. <laughs> so, where are we at? Oh, they also talk about Bob's makeup. Now, this is a very interesting topic because a lot of people have, uh, or quite a few people have said this as well, that Bob's makeup, you don't see like a real drag aspect to it, more or less. And Bob sort of explained it that he's more so for the performance than the appearance. He's not going to necessarily go out there looking completely busted, but he's not focusing so much on the makeup aspect as opposed to his performance of whatever it is that he's doing. And I've seen a lot of shows with Bob and I think he's very good. I think he's very entertaining. I, you hardly ever even remember or think about the fact that he doesn't have on these huge lashes or like really cut cheeks or, you know, highlight like, you know, like most other drag queens do. You hardly ever even notice that because you're so entertained by the show that he's putting on. So, Kim Chi was basically like, you know, I'm not trying to say that you're bad at makeup. I'm just saying that it looks like there's nothing there. <laughs> Which, I mean, you know, as an African-American, it is a little bit harder to find proper shades for us than it is, you know, more fair people. At least from my experience. It's like we'll find something that's kind of close and we have to mix different foundations to try to get that just right shade. So... And, and I know I haven't seen or it's very rare that I see, you know, very dark hued people able to uh, paint that way and have like a good match to their skin. So I understood Bob's plight, but he also was like, you know, I'm not necessarily more so focused on that. I'm mostly focused on being, you know, a performer. So <laughs> Derek Berry finally decides to glue down their brows and after Herb and Naomi was going back at it for, like, pfft, forever, uh, even they had the shade of, like, Naomi was like, if you glue down your brows, I'll glue down my wig. <laughs> because they've never talked about my wig, but they have talked about your makeup, bitch. <laughs> so I feel like Naomi won this whole little pitter-patter. But need that, be that as it may, Naomi apologized, and, you know, they buried the hatchet, and he was trying to show her how to cover her brows, and Kim Chi was like, I mean, that's something you should probably have practiced before coming on RuPaul's Drag Race, which is like the Olympics of drag, you know, <laughs> try covering. I mean, I mean, not every queen does it, but it's still, a, I feel like it's a necessary skill that you should have in your repertoire just in case situations just like this, you need it. It is, God, that thing could get on my nerves. So he did it and... Let me tell you something. Covering your brows and drawing them on is not easy. If you don't have a steady hand, if, you can, if you're not just somebody who can really view it and get the shape right, because I tried that first and it was horrible. I had to go out and buy the proper stencils. Like, when y'all seen the looks that I've done on my uh, transformation video that I did about a, a few weeks back? That was, you see, so that was with a stencil. I need some kind of guide and then I can kind of go from there. But before that, I need help. <laughs> lots and lots of help so it's not easy now granted what he did looked okay for a first try but he did kind of have like that you know they were so high up that he looked like he was shocked and surprised <laughs> bless his heart just bless his heart um where are we uh oh <coughs> Oops, excuse me Derek had mentioned this whole thing about when he came out to his mom, uh, how she she didn't really like be as far as to kick him out the house and completely reject him, but she gave that whole oh well can we just kind of keep this under wraps like she made she attached shame to it 
And he, Derek Barrett said that he never really, he looked at her differently. Like, I guess that she looked at him differently. And so she kind of, that that kind of thing really can affect a person. If your parents and the person that you love and look up to doesn't really accept who you are, it really can hurt and affect a person. So I was, you know, I was feeling where he was coming from. And I was like, oh, okay, well, Derek, you know, you do have somewhat of a softer side. And we know when we start seeing the soft side of people is when they're about to go home. <laughs> Acid Betty. Anyways, so they're about to pull out these looks. All the baby looks were kind of meh. <laughs> the mom looks were cute. Mainly, it was Chi Chi and Kim Chi, whose mom looks were just amazing. Even the whole story about how his mom doesn't really ex necessarily accept or know about what he's doing. She, he gave that whole just look of somberness and sadness, but still just beauty and elegance. And it was just fantastic. <laughs> it was just fantastic. I told y'all, Kim Chi is fantastic at what she does. And even, Kim, and even Chi Chi. Each week, Chi Chi has just been stepping her game up as far as her outfits and makeup. I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it, girl. She came out in like a neck. I don't know what to call it. But the gown pretty much was like a turtleneck and it just a leopard all the way down to her foot. She had like the little uh, ombre colored wig on and makeup was looking great. And she walked out there and she was serving it. I was like, okay, I like it. I really, I was, I was really digging it. Um, as far as the book looks, Kim Chi had a whole story going on. Like when she was a baby, she was like a little uh, sapling and then. As a mom, you can see like the twigs starting to grow. And then when she came on her book look and this big old flower, like she had a whole storyboard played out. <laughs> then Bob really, as far as the mom looks, she came out looking just like Viola Davis. And I think that she knows that <laughs> and had no problem with it. His book look was more so like cardboard. And the judges told him that, like, it's not really books. It's more so just like a cardboard look. And so that was when Bob really got, like, his first bad critique on an outfit, I think. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Naomi. Naomi's mom look was a little... Mm -mm. Like, the story behind it was more interesting than the look itself to me. Uh, but her paper look, it was... I love that. It was almost like a gown, like a like a little uh, cocktail dress that was just shooting out uh, paper and just really, really abstract shapes. And it was just really, really nice. Um, Chi-Chi, Chi-Chi was like, she looked like she was ready to fly away. It looked like she had feathers. She had a little uh, uh, paper. The pages, they were cut in like little shape. Like, I don't know. I, I can't describe it as feathers. Like, but she looked amazing. Chi Chi has really stepped up her game and I can just keep getting so proud to see her going as far as she did. She's in the top four. Congratulations to Chi Chi. Make it to the top three and I will be ecstatic. Bitch, what if Chi Chi wins? <laughs> what if Chi Chi wins? Oh gosh, that would be a big F you and all the people that doubt in her space. But anyways, so the judges basically put like I knew Derek was gonna be in the bottom three because his all of his looks, even the page thing was just not not anything. I thought Derek was gonna really try to come out with something, but it no, nah, it just wasn't wasn't happening. So it was Derek Berry for sure in the time in the bottom two, and I'm thinking, who else? And then I'm thinking the only other person that got negative critiques on their outfits was Bob. And I'm like, is they really about to put Bob and Derek in the bottom two? Lo and behold, Bob and Derek in the bottom two. And I was just like, oh, wow. Oh, God. I have to, I had to get close to see this because I'm like, I know Derek is a great performer. I'm not sure how Bob dances. He's good. So I'm just trying to see like, okay, who's going to go home? If Bob goes home right now, I'm just not even going to know what to think about how the rest of the season is going to go. But Derek Berry did go out, and it was nice. You know, I feel like he went out fighting. He didn't really give up. He fought till the end. And, uh, yeah, so that was nice. I really enjoyed this episode. I think this is my new favorite episode of the season. Uh, next next week, they're going to be shooting the, the Realness music video. So that should be interesting. Um, <laughs> now, for Untucked... There wasn't much to untuck. Like, 
it's really just as far as it's getting narrower and narrower down, we're seeing such a camaraderie. Even people who were fighting really, really hard against each other were really starting to develop a bond. And it's really nice to see. It makes you feel good to see. Naomi got a message from her mom, and so she got really, really emotional, and it happened on the same week that they're doing, like, an Inspired by Mom challenge, so that was really, really nice. I think that was planned, but either way it goes, it works, and they was, uh, they all did, like, the, you know, the purse first, because we're not going to be together much longer, you know, this, just the camaraderie of it makes it uh, all the better, and it really made me feel, you know, good about, even though Derek went home, and I was waiting for Derek to go home, I, you know, I still felt a sense of happiness, like it wasn't a bittersweet moment for him to go home. And so, now we have our top four. We have Miss Chi Chi Devane, Bob the Drag Queen, Kim Chi, and Naomi Smalls. Who will be the next queen to go home? My prediction, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know because... Chi Chi has stepped up her game up. Naomi has stepped up her game up. Bob slipped a little bit this week, but and Kim Chi won this week, so it's really, really tough right now, and it's so exciting. Even though I still think Bob's gonna win, just based off the pattern, <laughs> I'm still excited to see how this whole thing is gonna play out. So let me know what you guys think in the bottom, and like, comment, subscribe to the video if you're new. I hope you subscribe. And to all my returning viewers, welcome back. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Like, share, subscribe. Jamar, Washington, Washington, Washington.